Farm, 1927 Homestead. I don't usually bring you guys out here with me this early, but uh, we had a terrible, terrible storm last night. It lasted for over two hours. It was rattling our little house. And I came out here to the rain gauge, and I want to show it to you. It's got almost four inches of water. They were calling for floods in our, our area. This might have had just a little bit of water in it, but uh, I know we got over three inches. So our little float's almost up to four. So there might maybe a half an inch in here, but like I said, that's a lot of rain in just a couple hours. So I'm bringing you guys out here with me to assess the damage. There was a terrible, terrible wind, and I am afraid to go look at the sorghum because it's tall and heavy on the top now, and this is just the time of year that uh, it would blow down, and there was heavy, heavy wind last night. So go with me, and we'll go look at it. As so I was walking through here, you can just see how it washed. Okay, neighbors, we're here. Let's see. The way that wind was blowing last night, this should have been flat. You can see that there's some down. but it could have been so much worse. In every row, there's some down. But this is strong stuff, and I've seen it stand back up before. As long as it's not broken. But you know me, I'm going to go in there and help it and help stand it back up. It was pounding on it last night. There's some laid over the fence. There's an alarm that keeps going off in the distance. I'm sure it's from that storm last night. But guys, this is just a minimal amount of damage. And I thank the Lord for that. Thank you for coming along with me because I was real scared to come out here. It's a little early. But I just couldn't stay inside anymore. But I think it's going to be able to recover from this. I've come in here now. It's a little bit worse. Then it looked from the outside. So I'm just gonna, I can't give up on it. I'm just gonna have to come in here and start uprighting it. 
as the tops dry, they're saturated with water, they'll get lighter. But they might not upright their cells, which is going to really heed in the process of uh, stripping and getting people through here in the next four weeks. So we're going to have to work on it to help it. Can't give up on it. I want to give you a little update on the sorghum. Guys, it's just going to be a few short weeks to where these stalks are going to start coming down. They're not quite ready yet. They're still green at the top. They'll get a little bit more brownish burgundy as they get ripe. So they're not quite there. They are getting amazingly tall though. But that's the problem with them. That's how the wind gets them. So I haven't, I haven't shown you what it looks like since we uh, set some of it back up after the storm came through the other day. So look how it's all standing up through there. I'll take you down this row and show you exactly what we did. We tied it up. We just got a temporary fence post there, baling twine, and now it's all reaching up for the sky. And this, this row and the next row, there's another fence post in there, was the worst. And it's still leaning, so I'm not going to take the strings off of it. But it's just fine. We went through every bit of it to check damage. And there was damage like we went in the next day. And some of them like this one were on the ground. If I try to pick that up, it will break. These didn't that we did the day of. But when we came in here the next day to try to straighten these out, they would break. So I'm not. But look at it. It's reaching back up to the sky. So I'm not going to bother it it's still growing and it'll still be fine for for the syrup so you're seeing it when it's almost getting ready it hadn't started turning brown yet it's still good and green down here which means it's still growing and filling out so you got some nice thick ones like this one and then right beside of it you got a thinner one so it, they'll keep they'll keep uh filling out but that is the sorghum update. Y'all just stay tuned. Here's a little shorty here. You can get a real close up of the head. And that's what it looks like when it's green. But this one was all kind of by itself, so I just left it. So it's looking wonderful. 
and so very thankful no more of it got blowed down in that storm. But y'all just keep coming with us and it will soon be in the vat of cooking. It's golden hour on the homestead and I'm about to go out and get the goats up for the night. When I walked outside, I saw the cutest thing and I just had to come and get the camera so I could show y'all. I hope I don't wake her up. Look at her. It's my kitty wobble baby and she's sitting on mama's stool that she sits on to pick beans and she's asleep in the middle of the garden. It's the cutest thing ever. Get around the elderberries. Try not to wake her up. Isn't that the cutest thing you ever seen? And then between the corn and the green beans. Ray, come in. I always bring them in around golden hour. Because it's no fun getting in the animals in the dark. Hey, Mompy. So we got all this grass to eat. But everything outside of the fence is, of course, much greener than what's on the inside. Come on, Mompy. Come on, Mompy. This is my favorite part of the day. Golden hour, right before it gets dark, sunset the best time of the day.